So will you pray with me? O Lord, in the silence of this moment, prepare our hearts and minds to hear your word for us this day. Work your will in our lives. Amen. So, uh, on numerous occasions, it happened with my children, it happens now in my work. People want me to be a prognosticator. That's a big word for saying they want me to tell them what's going to happen in the future about this or that. You know, that when I think about the future, there are some things I want to have happen. Uh, we've already sort of played with it a little bit. I'd like to see uh, the University of Texas win another national football championship. I would like to see the Cowboys win a Super Bowl. I'd like to see the Mavericks win another championship. And it is my long held desire. be at the ballpark of the Rangers from the World Series. That has to do with my own past, with my own father, simply because he was such a big baseball fan and a great baseball player. And I remember a time when he said that he hoped, he didn't think he would ever see the Rangers play in the World Series game. That there would never be one. A few minutes after that, he died. And several years after that, on the day he died, Alex Rodriguez of the Yankees struck out. On the same day that he died in the World Series, and the Rangers went to the World Series. My brother and I called each other. We sort of both phoned each other at the same time. He said, do you remember what Dad said to you several years ago? And I said, yes. And I made it one of the things that I did do is at least to go see two World Series games in Arlington that year. But they didn't win. There's not much about which I can predict or you can predict. But there is something that we can do is we can create, at least in our own mind, in our own, the own, our own souls, what the future should look like. We should have a vision of what the future can be. We should have a vision, create a vision in our own souls in such a way about how we wish to be. What we hope to do. And what is the vision that our God has for each one of us? Do you ever think about that even as a sixth or seventh grader, what it is that God might want for you? Or maybe I should ask the adults the same question. Do you ever think about that? I think that sometimes we think that uh, really uh, what it means to be a follower of Jesus is to say some magic prayers. Say yes to two or three questions. But Paul in the letter to the Colossians gave us some very simple instructions, didn't he? Let me read a couple of them again. I want to highlight them because I think they really determine, if you really live with them in such a way that they can determine your, your own future about what it means to be a follower of Jesus. As God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, by the way, you're God's chosen ones. Clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. So what would it be like to get up every morning and think, I'm going to wear compassion today? Or I'm going to wear humility today? Or meekness? Or I'm going to be patient? This says be with each other. It says bear with one another, but it means to sort of put up with each other. Put up with each other in such a way that if anyone has a complaint against another, just forgive them. Because you've been forgiven. There are a couple of times that, uh, that, I, that I think to myself about what's happened, what my life has been like that day. I have to admit that most of us who live in this country, places where we live, uh, my life is very good compared to most people in the world. Compared to most people. My life is 
And so I don't think about the things I could have received or the things I should have gotten or any kind of accolade or war or winning a race. And I know that's an important thing to so many people at certain times in my life. I, I really begin to think of myself, of myself in this way. And I, I try to think, do I, do these words begin to describe who I was today? And I have to tell you that some days I make it a, a B. And a lot of days I make it a C. But that's what it means to be a United Methodist Christian because one of the things that Methodists believe that we don't talk about enough is that you and I are never complete, completely holy or completely whole. And it means that what we do is we keep moving into perfection. Now perfection in this word means to be made perfect in love. It does not mean getting A plus on the math test tomorrow. Or doing a great job of your English paper later this week. Being able to spell every word that you get this week or do all the math this week. It means perfection really in terms of the Christian sense means will you be more loving? You see, when Wesley talked about grace, John Wesley, how many of you know who John Wesley is? Okay. So when John Wesley talked about grace, he talked about that decision that you make, and sometimes we make that decision just on our own. You know, I'm going to follow Jesus. And sometimes we've just been doing it, or we've been walking alongside and realized we made that decision, we don't know when, where, or how. And then what prepares us to make that decision really is something that, that is ever present in our lives, and that is, is the Holy Spirit. There's a word that's used called prevenient grace, and that's the grace that God surrounds you with. And it's that grace that, that happens uh, whether you know it or not. It's just continually drawing you back into the circle of God's redeeming love. And after that, you make a decision, or somehow you made a decision, but you don't know it, but this is the critical piece for that. After that, it's not just saying yes, filling in all the right knots, the right questions. The idea that we're going to be of sanctification, we're going to be made perfect in love. How many clergy are in the room? Can you raise your hand? A few clergy in the room. So this is a question that was asked of the clergy when they were ordained, do you expect to be made perfect in this life? Which means, will you become more loving? And I think that's sometimes why I grade myself as Because I'm not as good as I was in need to be want to. But it's just like this continual R, this continual momentum that you have. Somehow, I believe that God's vision for me is to get closer and closer to making an A in my life, on being made perfect. You know, we all have people who irritate us in life. Do you have people who irritate you? We're not talking about your parents now, so we're just be <laughs> lucky. But there are people who irritate you, or maybe a little bit different, and frankly, those are the people who you ought to choose you just love them, I think you discover that you're capable of so much more than you ever imagined. You didn't know that you could be humble and compassionate and all of those things, but I think that that's what it's talking about. It's not having all the right answers in those Bible verses that runs, it's just the beginning to somehow see that you're going to begin to love people. As God loves them. As Jesus loved the woman who touched, touched the hem of his garment. If she could just touch it, she would be glad. So, things don't always go well in your life, in my life, in your parents' lives, in your pastor's lives, but this is the one thing that we can do that keeps us in. It's just we get to see something happen. Everything put on what it means to be made in the life of It's called compassion and humility. All those other things. Colossians chapter 3. So, in a few moments, we're going to take Holy Communion. And really, uh, every time I celebrate the sacrament, take the bread, the wine, the juice, juice at this church, so it's, 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 I think of it, it's really great juice. Every time we do it, what we're doing is, is that we want, we strive to do it. Do that by remembering that. And we want to somehow know that we, we have chosen the future for 
ourselves. We have a vision of who we can be. And that vision is just very simple. To be more 